are there others who know that certain Masons worship Lucifer? Are there others who know that the Masons want to bring about the New World Order? Are there warnings being issued for anyone who will listen? Captain William Morgan, a Mason who exposed the secrets of the Masonic Lodge in 1826 in his book entitled, Freemasonry Exposed, wrote this. The bane, defined as the ruin, of our civil institutions is to be found in Masonry, already powerful and daily becoming more so. I owe my country an exposure of its dangers. The publication of this book was not looked upon with favor by the Masons after it was made public. The captain paid with his life for his attempts to warn America. The introduction to the original edition identified his murderers as being the Masons themselves. It said. The author was kidnapped and carried away by a number of Freemasons. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. The Masons, however, do not believe that Captain Morgan was murdered. Albert G. Mackey in his encyclopedia says this. There are various myths of his disappearance and subsequent residence in other countries. It is certain that there is no evidence of his death that would be admitted in a court of probate. Even though the Masons deny that the captain was murdered, the newspapers of the day reported that his murder was fact, and it was widely accepted in America that members of the Masons were responsible for his death. As a result of the national furor over the killing, this nation's first third political party, called the Anti-Masons Party, sprang up as a protest to the activities of the Masonic Order. A former Mason and minister from New York, William Preston Vaughan, also attempted to warn America in 1830. If the lodge went unchecked, the United States would have a Masonic monarchy for its government, a Masonic church, a Masonic way to a Masonic heaven, and blood and massacre and destruction to all who subscribe not to the support of the monarch. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, also had strong feelings about the Masonic order. He wrote this in 1833. I do conscientiously and sincerely believe that the order of Freemasonry, if not the greatest, is one of the greatest moral and political evils under which the Union is now laboring. He continued by saying that Masonry was a conspiracy of the few against the equal rights of the many, anti-Republican, here he was not referring to the Republican Party, but to the concept of a republic as a form of government, in its app, meaning vitality. I am prepared to complete the demonstration before God and man that the Masonic oath, obligations and penalties cannot by any possibility be reconciled to the laws of morality, of Christianity, or of the land. Millard Fillmore, the 13th President of the United States, made this statement. The Masonic fraternity tramples upon our rights, defeats the administration of justice, and bids defiance to every government which it cannot control. Another who spoke out against the Masons was Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th president, who said this. All secret oath-bound political parties are dangerous to any nation, no matter how pure or how patriotic the motives and principles which first bring them together. John Marshall, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in the early days of this nation, was a member of the Masonic Lodge. Apparently he changed his mind and later recanted, he made this charge. The institution of masonry ought to be abandoned as one capable of much evil and incapable of producing any good which might not be affected by safe and open means. Another warning came from John G. Stevens, a Baptist clergyman who denounced his Masonic ties by publishing his views in an inquiry into the nature and tendency of speculative masonry. Included in his writings were these conclusions. Masonry was a state within a state and that one day Masons would overthrow the democratic government of the United States and would crown one of their grand kings as ruler of this nation. Another minister who came out of Masonic order was Charles G. Finney, who left the order when Captain Morgan was murdered. He wrote a little pamphlet entitled Why I Left Freemasonry, in which he made these observations. In taking these oaths I had been grossly deceived and imposed upon. Indeed I came to the deliberate conclusion that my oaths had been procured by fraud and misrepresentations, that the institution was in no respect what I had been informed it was, and, it has become more and more irresistibly plain to me, that masonry is highly dangerous to the state and in every way injurious to the Church of Christ. But perhaps the most ringing criticism of the Masons came from Pope Leo XIII, the Catholic Pope from 1878 to 1903. He wrote these words in an encyclical entitled Humanus Genus. Their ultimate purpose. Namely, the overthrow of that whole religious and political order of the world which the Christian teaching has produced, and the substitution of a new state of things in accordance with their ideas, of which the foundations and laws shall be drawn from mere naturalism. The Pope went on later in his encyclical to explain what he meant by the term naturalism. The fundamental doctrine of the naturalists is that human nature and human reason ought in all things to be the mistress and guide. 
the naturalists teach that marriage belongs to the genus of commercial contracts, which can rightly be revoked by the will of those who made them, and that the civil rulers of the state have power over the matrimonial bond. So the Pope correctly noted that the Masons were committed to creating a new world order, they wanted to create a new state of things by overthrowing the whole religious and political order. Then he identified the new world they wanted to replace it with, one based upon reason. He continued his discussion of why he was concerned about the Masons, their endeavor to obtain equality and community of all goods by the destruction of every distinction of rank and property. Here the Pope states that the Masons share the vision of Karl Marx, the communist, who wanted to abolish private property. The Pope said that the Masons wanted to destroy the distinctions of property. The Pope's fate, after he wrote these warnings to the world, was perhaps revealed in a Time magazine article on June 18, 1984. The article said this was what might have happened to him, there were the whispers about how poison killed Leo XIII in 1903. Another who attempted to warn the world about the Masonic Order was Bernard Fay, who wrote a book entitled, Revolution and Freemasonry. This is why he shared his concern, the new masonry did not aim to destroy churches, but, with the aid of the progress of ideas, it prepared to replace them. According to Mr. Fay, the Masonic religion wanted to replace the Christian religion. Another writer on the subject of the Masons is Arthur Edward Waite, who wrote this in his book entitled, The Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the Latin Church, apparently meaning the Catholic Church, has agreed to regard Freemasonry as those forces which are at work in the world against the Church in that world. The Orthodox Presbyterian Church met at Rochester, New York, on June 2-5, 1942, and they issued a report on the ancient order of free and accepted Masons. The following was part of their conclusions. Masonry is a religious institution, and as such is definitely anti-Christian, membership in the Masonic fraternity is inconsistent with Christianity. Furthermore, another church body, this time the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, passed a resolution in 1975, calling for specialized literature for persons who belong to anti-Christian sects and cults. One of the six booklets that resulted from the call was one on the Freemasons called How to Respond to the Lodge. But one of the more dramatic studies of the Masons occurred a short time ago in England, when the Church of England released a report on them after a summer session examined the order. The article that appeared in the Arizona Daily Star, released by the Associated Press on July 14, 1987, said that. Church of England leaders overwhelmingly endorsed a report yesterday that called Freemason rituals blasphemous. The report. Freemasonry and Christianity. Are they compatible? Said some Christians found Masonic rituals disturbing and positively evil. Perhaps the best summary of the whole concern about the Masonic Order came from an ex-Mason, Edward Renane, in his book entitled, The Master's Carpet. Mr. Renane said this. Masonry is a system which has not the least shadow of support, either from history, from scripture, from reason, or from common sense, but, in fact, is diametrically opposed to them all. But, men of rank, wealth, office and power still join it. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, drop a comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell too. Thanks for watching till the end. Stay safe and healthy.